Hey everybody, welcome back to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. So in today's video, it's kind of going to be a response or a sequel video to my how to earn money in Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Uh, I got a lot of uh, native comments, I got two, but that's a lot on my channel. Uh, I noticed I had a lot of viewers on my channel, so uh, on that video, so uh, I figured I'd kind of make a more comprehensive uh, analysis of it and give people uh, give people a better guide and kind of. But to start off, I want to kind of defend the point I was making in the video. Uh, by no means in end game, I mean in real life time, is grinding away at practice fights the best way to make money. Uh, that's not the point I was trying to get across. Uh, what I was trying to get across is like, there is in game time that you have to deal with. That can be kind of hard to manage if you have like a quest that you have to complete or something. And so, when you're trying to manage that in game time, you have to worry about like your quest. You know, you only have so many days to complete a quest or something. And that's why uh, quests can be kind of rough. So, I'll take a quest here. Quest. So basically, the idea was is a uh, practice fights. No in-game time passes. So if you have the time and do you don't mind grinding away at practice fights, and your combat skills are good enough in the beginning of the game, it's easy money. It's an easy way to make money if you just need that 250 gold right away and say you need more troops or something you're completely out of gold it's it's more of an emergency thing it's kind of like a fail safe that the developers are putting in the game to where as long as you're in a city there's always a way to make money quickly uh, enough to you know pay party wages or something I didn't intend to make it as a uh, the best way to make money and I didn't title it that way now that's out of the way probably one of the best ways to make money in the game especially early on is just do the quest now there are certain quests I avoid and there are certain quests that I like uh, this one right now is uh, the escort and caravan quest they're not terrible but uh, it's not one of my favorite quests by far. Uh, the problem I have with it is you have to follow this caravan around, right? And you follow it around and it will go to multiple cities, right? So, bring it up. It has to go to four settlements for the quest to be considered completed. And that is very time consuming so if you're doing an escort merchant caravan that's pretty much you cannot have another open quest up like if you have a quest to like go get horses for a lord or something you're gonna be wasting almost a week in game just doing this one quest and you can't leave the caravan at any point so this is actually a really good quest for assigning a companion and I'm just gonna. He's taking off back that way. Okay. So yeah. See, he only has 12 troops with him, which means that if bandits attack him, he's pretty much dead immediately. Which is another downside of this quest. You have to stay with them completely, and uh, unlike other quests, unlike how you would think it would be. Where, like, you'd have to worry about roving bands of bandits, like those guys right there. They'll ignore them. You don't have to worry about them at all. As long as you have a large enough party like mine, they won't come near them. But the problem you have is when they leave a city, 
I don't think it's every city, but at least once during the quest, as soon as the caravan leaves the city, a massive bandit party of like 50 to more bandits will just magically appear outside the city waiting to ambush them. Which, I'm not really sure how that makes any narrative sense at all, but that's my biggest problem with this quest, because, like, you have to hit that time limit so well. Like, okay, here's a great example of what I was talking about. Um, right now, I'm about out of money, and my party's gonna need wages, so, you know, I probably should have, uh done a few practice fights before I went into this. I haven't played on this character for a little bit, but he's my highest level character right now. So, they're about to go into this city right here. Jalmaris or whatever. So as soon as they go in there, as soon as they come out, there might be a bandit group waiting on them. And that's why I really hate this quest. Because the bandit group's going to be on them immediately. And with only 12 guys, they're not going to last very long. By the time I get to them, even being right next to them, they could be gone. Now, this is one of my favorite quests right here, Army of Poachers. Uh, I'm not going to show gameplay of it right now, but uh, it's definitely one of my favorite quests. It's one of the only quests that developers have added to the game so far, where you actually have like peaceful option to deal with the problem. You have these poachers that are hiding out in this place. The merchant, they're not paying the merchant. They're not giving them the resources. Uh, and it actually gives you an option to negotiate, use your charm skill to try to talk them out of fighting. And that's awesome. I love that in RPG games, and it's nice to see a quest like this in the game. Uh, there aren't very many. This is probably the best one I can think of, and it's one of the older quests in the game. So, Mer Army of Poachers is great. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of men. If you have at least Tier 2, Tier 3 troops, um, if you have infantry, make sure they have a shield. If you have archers, make sure they're fairly high level, because the poachers are going to be a group roughly of around 20, maybe 30 people. And they're all archers. They're all uh, decent archers. So you're going to get a hell of arrows coming in if you go into combat. Uh, you have an option to talk to the leader and talk them out of it. If you fail, you have no choice but to fight them. So uh, that's a great quest. There's a new quest that they added. And I don't know if I can get it on here. But it's called Caravan Ambush. Yeah, there's nobody here for it. I'll do a, I think I'm going to do a video just on this quest because I love it so much. Because I don't think the developers realize how kind of messed up the quest actually is. But Caravan Ambush is a great quest. It's similar to the Escort Merchant Caravan, but... Uh, basically, the merchant tells you that the caravans are getting harassed and they're getting fed up with it. So they're planning an ambush to take care of the bandits once and for all. So in this quest, you follow the merchant caravan similar to how you did before in this one. But in it, you, uh, you follow them, but you have to tail them. So you actually have to maintain somewhat of a distance from them. Otherwise, the bandits won't attack them. Which is really cool. We haven't seen them do anything like keeping a distance before in the game. So I love when they add a new quest that actually adds new features to the game. Uh, the developers, I, I want to see more of that. More of that, more army of poultures, more caravan ambush. They're both great quest probably the best side quest you can do in the game um, there is a simple quest they added called in and out and uh, in and out is just this little quest you'll get in in a village I think the village has to be the vassal of a city like this so like this city 
it has to be a vassal. It has to be a vassal of a nearby city. And uh, the thief, my bad. So you go to a little village and you talk to one of the villager guys, and he'll give you the in and out quest. And basically, what it is is he's lost a deed to a piece of land on uh, in a game um, in a betting game at the tavern and if you haven't tried it there are these little games in the taverns uh, there's actually different games based on the region you go to so each region kind of has its own game uh, this is the one I've always had to play for to bolt uh, it's really simple uh, the game's fun enough but it's very heavily balanced to the defenders which is funny because when they describe the game to you it makes the premise of the game is that the defenders have the disadvantage but when you actually play it the defenders very much have the advantage you have a lot of easy setups for taking pieces in the beginning so here's some gameplay of the thing you basically what you have to do is like you move the pieces around another piece and it takes it so the defenders, all the defenders have to do is get their king piece to one of the edges of the, of the board. If the king piece goes to the edge of the board, then you win. And the whole goal of the attackers is to take the king piece. Once they take the king piece, they win. So it's simple, very simple to understand, easy to understand how to play. Uh, all the pieces can move in cross shapes any direction. As many pieces as they want, they can't hop over. Um, to take a piece, you have to get on either side of it, one, one, and you have to have either one piece on either side or one against the center piece. So even if the king isn't in the center piece, the center piece acts as a piece for taking pieces. So, once you move the king out of the centerpiece, no piece can cross the centerpiece ever again. So, when you're the attacker, you have to be careful about what you're doing. Because, um, I mean, when you're the defender, you have to be careful about what you're doing. Because, like, if I move my king piece out here, let's say I move this piece over here, move the king piece here. If I just move the king piece here, his black piece come in, and he'd take my king and the game be over. So this is just a simple game uh, for the in and out. Uh, all you have to do is win one game against the uh, game master. So that's another fun quest. It's real simple. Um, you ha I think you have to bet like a thousand dinars in order to uh, win the property deed. I'm not sure how much money it gives you, but again, it takes you to the nearest city. It's real simple, real short. All you have to do is learn how to play one of these board games, and you got it. Um, but quests are really one of the best ways to earn money in the game. Another way to earn money would be uh, another way to earn money is basically just hunt down bands of looters. That's definitely the best way in the early game when you don't have much is to just hunt down some looters, and you know. I got some looter stuff here. Uh, sell them all off. Uh, sell off all the armor that you can't use. Um, I've seen a lot of people in discussion boards on the game talk about how good blacksmithing is for making money. Uh, it might be. I've recently tried to get into it a little bit. I, I guess once you get high level blacksmithing, it's like the best way to make money in the entire game. Because the weapons are worth way more than, like, the raw materials for it will be. But you kind of have to grind a lot to, like, get your smithing up. Like, nobody's going to dump their starting skills into smithing. I don't think anybody thinks of that. I just recently started a new character where... Uh, I recently started a new character where I was going to try to go a little more uh, smithing focused, smithing and trading, and do that. And even picking like every option in the beginning of the game to be good at smithing 
you still don't start off at a high enough level to make a single thing in the beginning perfect so basically you have a lot of little customization and uh, so you do the whole thing you get what you want and so see right here the difficulty is 42 even I've I've been smithing quite a bit with this character since I made it and he is still only level 37 so there's a lot of grind to it basically the best way to level it up is to go over here to the smelt tab and anytime you take out a band of looters and stuff take all the weapons that you get and smelt them down here but as you can see down here on the screen you have to rest which it gets really annoying it's probably the most annoying thing it's just you have to literally just sit here and rest all the time you can't just sit there and grind on it even if you have the materials even if you have the money to buy the materials and stuff it only lets you do so much until it'll stop you from smithing meantime you know uh you know you got your party's wages coming out the whole time so like you definitely want to keep your party's wages low especially if you're going to be grinding on smithing which is kind of terrible because you know you need a decent amount of troops just to travel around the map i mean if you only got 10 guys even if they're good you're gonna get outnumbered by 50 50 sea raiders you're gonna get killed so it's kind of a rough balance uh, with this character i'm trying i'm trying to keep it you know fairly low and uh, make sure i have plenty of horses on me that way we move across the map a lot faster but uh you know you gotta fight you gotta fight uh looters and bandits every now and then especially if you want the weapons so if you want the weapons to smelt down you gotta fight and if you're putting all your skills into smithing instead of fighting you know you're not gonna you know you're not gonna have very good fighting skills as you can see so when you're trying to focus on smithing it's going to be a long process so with what i'm going over is kind of what's the best way to make money uh beforehand they say in the beginning of the game the best way to make money was workshops and caravans uh, but the recent updates have kind of messed it up but i don't know if my game's been bugged or what i've had a lot of issues since launch like I've had the day since the game since day one. I've been playing this since day one, and I've never made any money off caravans or workshops. Um, I I guess there was a way to upgrade them before, but I can never figure that out. There's never an option that I could tell. So a caravan and a workshop, like they cost you anywhere up to like fifteen thousand gold, which is a huge investment, and. Uh, in exchange, you get a daily income of like 200 to 300 gold. And as you can see, even my small party of tier 3, 30 troops, that takes up all that. So it's not really giving you profit. You'd have to have like a ton of them. At that point, you've already had to earn over 100,000 gold. And workshops are limited. I'm pretty sure caravans are limited too. Caravans and workshops just aren't the way to make money. I've never found them the way to make money. <sighs> the best way to make money is probably just going to war, uh, fighting other lords, taking all their stuff, selling their prisoners, uh, taking out bandits, you know, just fighting. It's kind of, it gets kind of boring after a while be honest you know you go into the fights and you know I like to mess around with the tactics and stuff and do flanking with my cavalry and everything but it does get kind of boring when you're just grinding and grinding away uh, tournaments a lot of people say tournaments are a good way to make money uh, they are but only in the early game because I think the reason update just totally makes the tournament so much easier. Because uh, before the recent updates, 
even in tournament battle, as you can see, I'm wearing my armor. Everybody's wearing their actual armor. And before the armor actually came into it. But I've noticed recently that, like, I can go up again. I can be using a tournament little weapon and go up against a fully armored tier 6 guy and just do perfect damage, like hitting somebody with no armor on the back. So I think they changed that to where your armor rating doesn't factor in with tournaments anymore. So that makes tournaments super easy. And if you've done as many tournaments as I have, I had a character back before we did it, where I won like 60 tournaments. And I was like the number one ranked tournament guy. And man, when you get in the tournaments that much, Basically, they keep, everybody knows you're going to win. Every, nobody's betting against you. So any money you normally make on the bets is just gone. That's basically the only money you can get in tournaments. Except for the prizes, which... When you get high enough level, the prizes are pretty much garbage at the Anyways, tournaments really aren't the best way to make money once you get high level anyway. Anyway, so that's my spiel on uh, ways to make money. Probably don't waste your time on caravans and workshops. Uh, you can if you have the money, but uh, your best bet is to join a kingdom and try to get some land. Uh, that way you can collect taxes and hopefully it doesn't get taken from you because that's a huge nightmare. I know in one of my games, every time my king would grant me a castle or a city, the Valandians would come along and take it, and then we would go siege another city, like a different city, and then I'd use my influence to get that one, and then the Valandians would come along and take it again, and it was just annoying as hell. To the point to where like I hunted down every member of Duterte's, whatever his name is, family, and executed them all. <laughs> Which was the early game, so I didn't realize how much executing actually hurts you. That's another thing with the quest. I don't take any quest that uh, had negative repercussions. Like, there were quests in the early game, I haven't seen them in a long time. But it was like, landlord needs access to the commons, you would get them in villagers, uh, villages. And it would be like a land dispute with two villagers. So like, one villager would want like, to take his herd to graze on another village's land. And uh, you, you go over there to escort them, and then the other villager would be like, Hey, you're not allowed to graze here, this is our land. And then you'd have to be like, no, and then all the people in that village would hate you. So, I don't like doing any quest that makes one group hate you more. Because, especially with the villages and stuff, you know, that affects your recruitment ability. So, I don't like quests like that. I don't like quests like uh, fencing goods or uh, gang leaders in cities. Uh, fencing goods, gang leader needs weapons, I don't like any of those. I will take the uh, rival gang movie in quest. Actually, I'll, uh, I normally uh, look at who is more powerful. I'll side with the more powerful gang leader. So, whichever, if there's a gang moving in that's less powerful, I'll normally uh, side with the other one. That's mostly because another way to make money, and especially if you're wanting to smith. Oh. Oh. Uh, especially if you want to make money, another way to make money is and smith is uh, to do the uh, go to the. Uh, Go to the, uh, walk around the town, and you'll see underneath every gang leader, 
like, uh, yeah, we got three gang leaders. Sometimes there's only two. Uh, each gang leader owns like an area. So this one owns the back street. This one owns the clearing and this one owns the waterfront. And it shows you in parentheses next to it how many troops they have stationed there. So like, buff, she has 14 in the clearing, but she's relatively weak. He has, he's probably the most powerful one here. And he has 16 at the waterfront. So like if he did a rival gang moving in, what I would do is I would do that for him. And then like, let's say he was going up against her. I would fight uh, her group, do that. And then that would gain me favor with him. So when I go to recruit troops, she would hate me and it'd be down here. But he would like me, so I'd have it all the way up here. And then another thing you can do, if you already have a gang leader that hates you, it makes sense to just go to their area. So, like, it says clearing for her. So if she already hates me, there ain't no point in trying to, like, win her back or anything. What I can do is just uh, go to the clearing. And um, you go to the clearing and you talk to the thugs. Uh, let's walk around the town. So I'll use the alt key to figure out where the clearing is. See, it's up there. That's going to be a while. So you just walk over to the clearing and you talk to the thugs standing around the clearing. And those will be her thugs. Uh, I recommend when you do that, have all your companions gather around with you. And uh, you just go up to the thugs and you talk to them like I would this one. There'll be a dialogue option and uh, it'll say like, uh, mind your own business. It's none of your business what I'm doing here, something like that. And then they'll start fight, they'll pick a fight with you and then they'll attack you. And there's normally like three or four of them. They're just base level thugs. But, you know, you don't have your full equipment when you're walking around the city, so you got to be careful. That's why I recommend having your companions with you. Um, so, you just fight them, and then it'll pop up an option. on. It'll take you back to the city screen. It'll pop up an option. It'll be like, uh, the, everything, the clearing's cleared out. Uh, do you want to wait here and try to hold it? And you hit yes, and you do that, and then, like, the gang leader will come and be like, what are you doing here? And you'd be like, get out of town, blah, blah, blah. And um, so then you start, a, you get in a fight with whatever their troops stationed there. So, like, if it was her at the clearing, she'd bring her 14 guys, and then it would provide me with like random troops. I'm not really sure how it determines who comes with you. I really love how they changed it to where at the bandit hideout you get to pick your group now. I wish they could do that with the uh, with how it works with the gang wars which is basically what it is and uh, you basically fight them knock them out and then after you knock them out you get to loot their place and that is pretty much the only place I've ever found the mask skill the mask steel which is this highest tier steel here I, pretty much every time I do this quest or well I wouldn't even call it a quest because it doesn't really show up on a quest marker it's more of a side activity the th masking steel, which is basically supposed to be Damascus steel, uh, I always get one of these every time. And if you need money, uh, I think they sell for pretty good uh, if you don't plan on doing smithing. So there's that. And if you plan on doing smithing, it makes a lot of sense to stockpile a lot of uh, the best steel you're going to be able to find in the game. So. That's another way you can earn some money. Um, again, other than that, you know, you got this one. Uh, it's for a gang leader, but it, there are no bounty hunters in this game, which I found weird. Uh, I kind of miss them a lot. There were some of my favorite troops to recruit in uh, Warband was uh, to find the man hunters running around the map hunting the bandits. And then whenever you take out a bandit group, 
sometimes you'd be able to recruit man hunters that they had captured because they always carried around clubs and stuff and that made it a lot easier to capture people but uh in this game there's no real bounty hunters uh, bounty hunters in terms of this quest is basically no different than the bandit camps that you find scattered across the map so when you take the quest you'll just go to a bandit camp and wipe them out and the merchants like it every time you wipe out a bandit camp so you're not actually doing anything like immoral or roguish by helping out this gang leader um, but yeah that's uh, pretty much it I have for this uh, I apologize to the people who watched the previous video and didn't find it very helpful. I hope you find this a little more comprehensive. Um, in summary, uh, short early game, uh, trading, uh, do tournaments. Uh, they're not hard. You can s uh, save scum at the beginning of the tournament. That way you don't lose any of your invested money. But they're not that hard. Like this blacksmith character I have right here, I've won several tournaments already with. I'm not sure how many, but I've just started playing with them. Let's see. I gotta be up here somewhere. Huh. Where am I? This is broken. It's only saying everybody has one victory. Well, the leaderboard is broken now. Didn't know that. 1.5.1, guys. Every update, something special. But uh, anyway, uh, again, sorry if you didn't find the last video. Early game, uh, I highly recommend just killing small groups of looters you have a small party it helps level them up fast uh, try to keep your party small keep horses on you take out bands of looters sell all their equipment if you want to focus on smithing you can but don't expect it to pay out for a long time uh, honestly to kind of throw back to some of the criticism i got on the last video it would almost pay out better to just keep doing practice fights over and over than to keep grinding and smithing. It would take you about the same time to make about the same money. Uh, one thing I thought about with smithing is like, you can make charcoal with smithing. Charcoal can sell for quite a bit. If you could like find a place where uh, hardwood's real cheap, just buy up all the hardwood or smelt down all the pitchforks and crap that you get and just turn it into charcoal you can make probably a tidy little profit off of that uh, as you get farther in the later game really start focusing more on quests uh, especially any kind of uh, any village that their primary production is a type of horse uh, let's see desert horse right here so see how this one has primary production of desert horse. So any village that has a production of horses, anytime you see the liver herd quest there, take it. It's super easy. They basically give you like 10 horses to deliver to a city, like halfway across the map. But it gives you short time frames. So you have to do it right then and there. You only got a few days. But the fact that they give you the horses increases your party speed so that actually helps you accomplish the quest because the more horses you have in your party the faster your group will move so delivering horses is great it compared to delivering other livestock that would actually slow you down in comparison delivering horses are great um, that's a easy way to earn money for basically nothing just we'll walking across the map uh, quest just do the quest there are several pretty good ones uh, there was one they added I think in 1.4 where you have to like go hunt down a village leader's daughter who's ran away with somebody 
it was a really cool quest, and there, it, like, like the army of poulters, it had a peaceful dialogue option to convince them, and they actually added, after the quest, I think they actually added to wanderers, so, like, you could actually recruit them after the quest, but I haven't seen it lately, I wonder if the devs took it out with one of the newer updates, but, uh, yeah, just focus on quest, uh, try to balance your money, try not to, like, when I'm lower level, and I'm not actually at war or anything, if you're not part of a kingdom, and you're not actively at war with somebody, the biggest advice I can tell you is just don't overindulge in the upgrades, like, I got troops ready to upgrade right here, I'm not gonna upgrade them, I'm gonna let them keep gaining experience if they want to, but, like, I really don't even need these tier 4 troops. You know, I sh probably shouldn't have leveled them up that high. Keep them low level. If they're low level, that means their wages are lower. If you're just going up against looters, you don't need anything higher than a tier 3. You know? So, um, that's probably the best way to save your money. It's just don't get troops that you can't handle. Um, then do quests. Alright, so I think I've rambled on long enough. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. It's not a choice. Thank you.